Uh, just a, a, a quick guest here, Joe. Uh, Joe is a Kasabian. Yeah, that's right. That's great, uh, Joe. I I found Joe on Twitter. <laughs> I, I, I was just I was so impressed with uh, some of his tweets. I wanted to get him on. He is a veteran, a historian, author of a new book, The Hooligans of Kandahar, and he's the host of a podcast, The Lions Led by the Donkeys. Uh, the website is geni.us slash hooligans, and you can tweet him at jkass99, uh, Joe Kasabian, or Kasabian, yeah. Uh, so, Joe, tell us about your tweets and how they've been, how they've been received. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, as like anybody else on Twitter, I was screaming at the ether, not actually thinking anybody was paying attention to what I said. And, uh, and here you are. I think it was, yeah, I, I think like two weeks ago, I think it was, um, you know, when uh, the president started talking about uh, soldiers on the border treating uh, possible refugees with uh, rocks uh, as if they're rifles. And uh, that kind of irked me. I mean, everything the guy does kind of irks me. But that one irked me because, uh, you know, I, I did two tours in Afghanistan. And as you can imagine, the locals aren't, you know, happy with us being there, and we have rocks thrown at us all the time. Um, if you shoot at them, that is a war crime. You can't use lethal force against somebody armed with a rock. Right. You can be prosecuted for that. You'd end up uh, in Leavenworth. Absolutely, as you should. Yeah. Um, and you know, to me, it's an incredibly dangerous precedent for, you know, we have um, a military from various different backgrounds and you know he is the commander in chief even though that's terrifying to think about um you know he can give orders to people and that might be misconstrued as an order yeah yeah and 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 that's i think that concerns a lot of us and and uh, particularly veterans and people who actually understand people who have been in a battlefield theater and understand what the rules of engagement what that what what that phrase means you know what how that is engaged you also more recently and i and i retweeted your your tweet and i hope that helped uh, get it out but i thought that your point that uh, this would be an effing war crime, you know, is what you said, yeah. uh, if, I, if I'm recalling correctly, uh, was so spot on. I just had to retweet that. I thought it was brilliant. And then uh, more recently, I was I was disturbed to see you tweeting that this uh, the fact that the Trump administration has not in two years now, a full two years, has not appointed, you know, two months short of a full two years, has not yet appointed a chief information officer for the Veterans Administration, the guy who would supervise their computer systems and uh, their, their IT operations. And so it's been basically on hold for two years. And the result of that is, apparently, is that uh, veterans who are eligible for GI Bill benefits, like housing and school, are not getting their checks, and they're and and it's a crisis. Is this happening to you, Joe? It is. Uh, I actually just learned that I won't be able to unless they fix it, uh, which uh, nothing the VA does or has ever done happens quickly. Uh, unless they fix it very very quickly, I won't be able to go to school next semester. That is terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Um, we uh, we're talking with Joe Kasabian, uh, a veteran historian, author of the new book, The Hooligans of Kandahar. Um, host of a podcast led led by donkeys, lions led by donkeys. Excuse me, um, and uh, you know, and a, and, a, and a recent Twitter star. And uh, Joe, I, I I was talking with uh, Congressman Mark Pocan in the first hour of the program about this, and and you know mentioned that veterans are are you know caught in this catch twenty two. Um, he he was like you know yeah Congress needs to do something, but also. The president needs to appoint a chief information officer so that that part of the Veterans Administration can get moving. I'm, you know, I'm guessing they're probably doing the best they can, but, you know, it's a mess. Um, how is how is this administration? I mean, you know, veterans, Republicans have always thought that veterans were reliable Republican voters. Or, I, not, I shouldn't say always. Uh, they've thought that basically since the Reagan administration. Uh, Democrats, you know, won World War One, won World War Two, and. And uh, they were thought of as the as the military guys up until the 1960s, but that all changed with LBJ in Vietnam. So, how, so how, uh, where is that at? I mean, as, as a veteran, as a member of the vets community, as somebody who is outspoken, um, and I'm guessing probably gets a lot of feedback from other vets, um, and not just specific to to uh, Trump, but also to the to the GOP broadly. Um, you know, where, where do you think the veteran community is at on these things? 
Um, unfortunately, I think uh, the GOP is right in that the veteran voting bloc is a pretty reliable one for the most part. Um, the military, by and large, comes from a, uh, a poor background. Uh, in my experience, uh, completely anecdotal, a lot of it's from the South or the Midwest. This is because it's an all-volunteer army, and, and I remember Thomas Jefferson uh, wrote a letter to James Madison in which he said, it is a great thing that we are not so impoverished that our young men are willing to sign up to be shot at for a sixpence. But tragically, that's apparently where we are right now. Absolutely, and I think that goes into, um, by and large, why certain reforms won't be made to things like health care and education. But um, yeah, they are still, in my um, experience, uh, a pretty reliable block. Even in this, uh, these last elections, very few veterans I know personally uh, were voting for anybody other than uh, the, the Trumpist Republicans that were coming up. Yeah. Um, I mean, there there is a very vocal and growing segment of the veteran population that's turned more decisively anti-war and has been turning slowly towards the DSA. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I the Democratic we'll Socialists in America. Yeah, I, it's yeah. interesting. I, I I lived in a in a marina in in Washington D.C. for seven years, and um, probably half I was living on a boat there. And and in, in fact, I'll be there tomorrow. And um, Probably half of the people who lived around me were uh, either retired or active duty military, mostly Navy and Coast Guard, um, because, you know, we were living on boats. And uh, during the primary, uh, more than a half dozen, uh, seven people I can think of right off the top of my head, um, who were veterans or who were active military, were just gung-ho for Bernie Sanders, and they had never voted for a Democrat ever. And then when Bernie lost the primary, as far as I know, all of them voted for Donald Trump. Um, because he was saying, I'm going to give you all health care and it's going to be better and cheaper than even Obamacare. He was saying, we're going to stop these stupid wars. He was the one who said to Jeb Bush's face, your brother's a war criminal and, and right. lied us into a war. Um, he, he was the one who said that he wasn't going to get us into any more stupid wars. Um, he was the one who said, I, you know, every Republican on this stage wants to cut your Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid and I won't touch them. Now, we know in retrospect now that those were all lies, that, that he just says whatever he think is going to work for him at the moment. And that was what worked for him at that moment. Um, but do you think that, that the military is waking up to this or that, you know, the average vet is starting to wake up to this? Or are they just stuck in a Fox News bubble or, or not paying attention or listening to right wing hate radio? Um, I, I still think they're trapped firmly in a bubble for the most part. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been out of the military since 2013, but I joined in 20, uh, 2005. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember even when I was 17 years old that uh, pretty much every channel and every uh, chow hall was tuned to Fox. Um, almost every senior mentor that I ever had uh, would eventually start spitting out some kind of crazy right-wing propaganda or outright conspiracy theories. Um, I was in in 2008 when President Obama was elected, and I didn't realize I was surrounded by so many outright racists. Yeah, um, I, I'm not in now, but I still know a lot of people who are, and uh, they're parroting the same, um, like, uh, like a unit that I was in and deployed with twice is on the border right now. And, uh, and I know several people who circled back around and ended up back in that unit, and they're all about going to the border. Really? Wow, I, I thought it, they would, you it know. It blows my mind. Yeah, I thought that they would be saying, hey, wait a minute, you're going to take Thanksgiving away just to have a photo op? That's amazing. Joe, I got I to gotta move along, but uh, Joe Kasabian is a veteran historian, author of the new book, The Hooligans of Kandahar. He's the host of the podcast, Lions Led by the Donkeys, uh, geni.us slash hooligans, and you can tweet him at jkass99. Tell him hi. Do I have all that right, Joe? Yeah, thank you very much. Great. Thanks a lot for dropping by. It's great talking with you, and thank you for your service to your country. It's, it's, a, it's a noble thing. Good talking.